Hello everybody, welcome to this episode of Programming Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at an abstract data type called a stack. So a stack is a special kind of data structure that we're going to explore and we're going to implement a stack using the array which we've already learned about before. So what's a stack? Well a stack is a pile of stuff, it's a pile of papers or a pile of plates. We know when we do our, our, our wash it up or whatever, we wash all our plates, we stick them in the in the drawer, in the, in the press, then what happens? We take the first plate out, eat our food in it, wash it up, then add it onto the top of the stack, then the next day we take the first plate out, the top plate out again, eat our food from it, and so on and so forth. So the principle of the stack is simple. We take the top element off and use that and we add to the top. So we can't add to the bottom, we can't add to the middle. If we look at the pile of papers there, on the side, if we tried to pull a, pay, uh, a file out from the middle, the whole thing would fall down. So we're not, we shouldn't really do that. We shouldn't pull any pages from the bottom or the middle. We should only take from the top, add to the top and take away from the top. So we could say we push onto the top and we pop off the top of the stack. So that principle is called LIFO or last in first out. The last element I added into the stack is the first one I take out. So LIFO, LIFO is last in first out. And that's our rule about the stack. The last item added or joined to the stack is the first one we serve or deal with. And stacks are used everywhere in computer science, in operating systems, in computer games, in networking, everywhere you can think of. This structure is really helpful for managing things. So here's a stack, it's, it's just an array, but it's pointing upwards. And, if I, and we've, we conceptually think of the bottom of the stack as being down there and the top as up there. And if I want to add values, that means I have to add them on top of 59. And if I want to take them away, I can only take them away from where the top is. So values are added on top, exactly. So if we want to add the number 67, it can't go in the middle, it can't go in the bottom, it just has to go right on top. So we plunk it on top and stick it there. So that's pushing a value onto the stack. And then if I want to pop a value out, it comes off the top. I cannot get to the number 41 there near the bottom. The only way I can get to it is by popping off 67, 59, 53, 26, 59 and then I get to 41 and 31, but I have to do it only from the top. That's the only way I can access values. So if we want to implement a stack in a programming language, there is some, some languages have a predefined stack type. What we're, go, what we're going to look at is code of how we would actually implement it using an array. So if we want to implement a stack using an array, we create an array called stack. The maximum length of the stack we call max size and the current pointer which tells us what's on where the top of the stack is we're going to call that stack top. It's worth noting at this stage for a lot of programming languages an array starts at zero and finishes at n minus one so if the array is ten long the numbers are zero one two three four five six seven eight nine. Therefore how we work this out in stacks is the max size is going to be 10 if the array is 10 long, but the maximum value of stack top will be 9, that is element number 9, which is the 10th element of the array. So we'll see that in action. So here we have a stack, it's almost full. The max size is 7 in this case, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and stack top at the moment is pointing at number 5, which is the 6th element of the array if we add the 0th one on as well. So when stack top gets to six, when we add another element in and stack top is six, then the stack is full. So when stack top is six and max size is seven, that means the stack is full. Let's do a simple simulation just to see what that looks like. There could be values or may not be values in this whole array, it doesn't matter. But the only, ones, the only value we can see at the moment is value number three. If we want to add a value on, we push it on to number four. And if we want to add another value on, we'll push it on to number five. But we can't see value zero, one, two, three, or four now. The only value we can see is number five because that's what stack top is pointing to. So if we, if we want to get back to number three, we'd have to pop off 
number four and then get back to number three. So that's a, a, a rough explanation of how stacks work. Let's look at the code in more detail. Our basic declaration is as follows. We have a program implement stack. We have, for our examples here, we're going to use integer types, but we can have a stack of real numbers or letters or strings or booleans for that matter. In this case, we have an integer of a stack size 7, and we're going to populate the stack and make it full. So it has those values, 31, 41, 59, 26, 53, 59, and 67 in the stack already. Because the length of the array is 7, we're going to say the, maximum, the max size of the array is 7, but that the top pointer, because it's full, is pointing to the element number 6, which is the 7th element. So we've declared a stack that's full. So we can't push any more elements onto the stack, we can only pop. Once we pop, we can overwrite the values that will push new values on. So we'll look at some methods or modules here. And the modules we're going to look at are check if the stack is full, check if the stack is empty, add a new value on called push, take a new value off called pop, and then um, a, a module called top, which tells us what is the top value without popping it off. So that's just a look, a read, but no write. So how do we check if the stack is full? Well, if the stack is full, if the stack's, the maximum size, which is 7, is equal to whatever the stack top is pointing to plus 1. So in this picture, we can see if we added two more values then into 5 and 6, stack top would point at 6 and max size would be 7. The maximum size is the length of the array, which is 7, and the sixth element number six, which is the seventh element, is the same thing. So it's full if stack top plus one is equal to max size. Let's see that in action. Here's one way of doing it. The module is called is full. We declare a Boolean variable called full. And if the stack top plus one is equal to max size, then we set the Boolean value to be true, else we set the Boolean value to be false. And then we say return that variable full. So that means when I call this method, when I say is full, open bracket, close bracket, it's going to give me back either true or false. It'll give me true if stack top plus one equals max size. It'll give me false if stack top plus one is not equal to max size. Of course, we can do that a lot simpler as follows. We can just say return stack top plus one equals max size because if stack top plus one is equal to max size, it'll return true. If it's not, it'll return false. So we don't actually need that Boolean full at all. We can do it this way, but it's nice to do it the other way just to see the code fully and understand exactly what's going on. If that's how to check if it's full, here's how to check if it's empty. We check if it's empty if the stack top is way past the bottom. So how, what, what's What's empty? Let's, let's look at it here. Uh, stack top is pointing to four, the fourth, no, element number four, which is the fifth element. If we pop that off, it'll be pointing to element number three, the third, the element number three, which is the fourth element. If we pop another value, it'll be element number two, which is the third element. If we pop another value, it'll be element number one, which is the first element. Then if it was pointing at the zeroth element, which is the first element, there's one value in the stack. So how do we know it's empty? Well, it's empty if the stack top is equal to minus one. So if the stack top is equal to zero, that means there's one element of the array. If stack top is minus one, that means there's no elements in the array. So if we get to minus one, we know we've emptied the stack. So let's look at the code. And again, there's two ways of doing it. Here's the longer way. We create a Boolean variable called empty. If the stack top is minus one, then empty is true, else empty is false, and then we return the boolean variable empty. Let's look at it the short way. If stack top equals minus one, then it's empty. So if stack top is equal to minus one, then this will return the value true, otherwise it returns the value false. Sweet. Now let's look at how we add a value onto a stack. Well, it's simple. There's two things we need to do. We need to move the stack top pointer by one, and then we need to write the value into that new position. So we see there, it's the stack top at the moment is pointing at element number four, which is the fifth element. If we add one onto 
stack top, it will be pointing to element number five, which is the sixth element, and then we write whatever value we need to push in into it. So let's look at the code. We say push, and then we're taking in a variable called in, which is the value we're writing in. First things first, let's check if the stack is full. And if the stack is full, then we just say stack is full. We can't do anything else. So if the stack is full, we say stop there. Otherwise, what we say is add one on stack top and then write the value in into the array stack at the value that stack top is now at. So that's a, a really neat way of pushing values onto the stack. If we want to pop a value off, it's the other way around. Popping means to take, move stack top down by one, but also tell me the value that was there. So if we were popping, we'd pop the number 53, which would mean 53 would be written out and stack top wouldn't point to element number four, it'd point to element number three. So we, we take one away from stack top and we write out the value 53. Let's see what that looks like. We create a variable called n and we, we set it to zero first because we want to return some value. If the stack is empty, then we can't pop anything off. So we just write out a message say stack is empty. Otherwise, what we do is whatever value the stack top is at the moment, we write that into n and then we take one away from stack top and then we return the value n. So stack top gets one taken away. We know that if we if if it if stack top is pointing to minus one, that means is empty will be true. So it'll print out a message saying stack is empty. Otherwise, what it does is stores whatever value at the moment, 53 it was, into the variable n, and then it takes one away from stack top. So that will be element number three now instead of element number four. And we return that value n. If we want to do the top bit which says, tell me what value is on top of the stack. It's exactly like pop, except we don't decrement the counter. So we don't move stack top down by one at all. We do everything else except take away one from stack top. So it's the same principle. We create a variable called n, we set it to be zero. And then if the stack is empty, we can't, the top is that the stack is empty. Otherwise, when we write the value currently being pointed to by stack top into n, and then we return in, but we don't decrement the counter because we're just saying, have a look at the stack and tell me what the top value is, but don't change it. So top means, tell me the, the top value. Pop means, tell me the top value and pop it off the stack. So that's it for Stacks and Q Stacks. Thanks very much. We'll see you in the next episode.